सी आई टी एन सी आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनि शाला सो लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनि शाला क्लास सिक्स हेलो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर निधि सिंह एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट क्लास सिक्स जोग्राफी टेक्स्ट बुक चैप्टर फोर दैट इज मैप्स my relatives have shifted to the same town as mine it has been years i met them as they lived in a different corner of the country this weekend they have invited me to visit their house i'm excited to meet my uncle aunt and cousins after so many years but i'm little anxious as well You know why? This is because I will be visiting that locality for the first time and I fear I will get lost. But you know what? I have an idea. What I'm thinking is that I will try to locate that place in a map and try to understand. I can also keep the map available with me. while traveling to their place so that i can easily find their house i will tell you another incidents sara and suman have become friends suman has taken admission to the same school this year both these girls take the school bus from the same bus stop Today they have planned to meet in the evening in the nearby children's park. But Sara raised the concern that she doesn't know exactly where the park is. Suman tried to tell her the location, but Sara still looked confused. So Suman drew a rough sketch. on a piece of paper this sketch showed the way from sara's house to the park the landmarks or the identification points from where sara needed to turn left and right etc were also mentioned on it sara took that piece of paper and they promised to reach the children's park on time to play together in the evening with the help of that paper sara managed to reach the park and both suman and sara played together now tell me what do you understand by a map a map is a representation or a drawing of the earth's surface or a part of it drawn on a flat surface according to a scale in the previous sessions we talked about globe right a globe can be useful when we want to study the earth as a whole but what about when we want to study only a part of the earth say for example about our country states districts towns and villages then globe seems to be of little help here comes the importance of a map so maps are important for us for various purposes the first one is that map shows a small area and a few facts this means we can know about details of a smaller place as well another importance of map is that a map may contain as many facts as a big book how this is because a map contains symbols etc that can be helpful in explaining various things 
do you know what an atlas is? When many maps are put together, we get an atlas. Isn't it? Do you have a school atlas with you? Observe that. It is a collection of many maps of different types showing various things. Atlases are of various sizes or measurements drawn on different scales. In this manner, maps provide more information than a globe. Let us think of a situation. Suppose, hmm, I want to create a map out of a globe. Can I do that? Is it possible to flatten the globe like a piece of paper? Try out on your own. Take an old rubber ball. Try drawing some shapes on it with a pen or a sketch pen. Consider this ball as a globe. Now make a cut in this ball with a pair of scissors vertically. Do not detach the two parts completely. Let the two sides be attached from one side. Try flattening it like a paper. Can you do that? No, not completely. You must have come across various types of maps. Try looking at a newspaper that comes in your house. Try finding out the page where weather data and forecast is given. Can you see a map? It shows the weather condition of India. There are several other types of maps depicting different things. In other words, there are several other types of maps. Let us try to understand these types. We all know the mountains, plains and plateaus etc are called the physical features and so the map showing these is known as yes physical map so the first type is physical maps maps showing natural features of the earth such as mountains plateaus plains rivers oceans etc are called physical or relief maps. There are another type of features such as cities, towns, etc. that are the outcome of human activities. Maps showing cities, towns and villages and maybe of different countries and states of the world with their boundaries are called political maps. The political maps form the second type of map. The third type is of thematic maps. Thematic means theme based. Some maps focus on specific information such as road maps, rainfall maps, maps showing distribution of forests, industries, etc. are known as thematic maps. Suitable titles are given on the basis of information provided in these maps. Thematic maps can be of any theme depending upon the need of study. 
these were the three major types of maps now let us try to understand what all things are included in a sketch to make it a map in other words let us try to understand what are the various components of a map think over it there are three components of maps first is distance second is direction and third one is symbol we will be taking up each one of these separately one by one at first we will take up distance try to understand this maps are drawings which reduce the entire world or a part of it to fit on a sheet of paper or we can say maps are drawn to reduce the scale of an area by this i mean to refer to the extent but this reduction is done very carefully so that the distance between the places is real and it does not gets distorted this is possible when a small distance on paper represents a large distance on the ground therefore a scale is chosen for this purpose scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and the distance shown on the map say for example the distance between your school and your home is 10 kilometers if you show this 10 kilometers distance by 2 cm on a map it means 1 cm on the map will show 5 km on the ground the scale of your drawing will be 1 cm equals 5 km so 1 cm represents 5 km is the scale of your map thus scale is very important in any map how if you know the scale you will be able to calculate the distance between any two places on a map isn't it when large areas like continents or countries are to be shown on a paper then we use a small scale for example 5 cm on the map shows 500 km of the ground then only we will be able to represent that huge area on a paper it is called a small scale map when a small area like your village or town is to be shown on paper then we use a large scale that is 5 cm on the map shows 500 meters only on the ground it is called a large scale map large scale maps give more information than small scale maps many a times people get confused between large scale and small scale in a map i will share one trick to understand this and remember small scale shows lesser details and large scale shows greater details right this means small scale maps will cover larger area but will show fewer details maps in your school atlas 
are small scale maps. On the other hand, large scale maps cover smaller areas but provide greater details. A district map or the map of your locality will be a large scale map. We need to keep this in mind that all these things are relative in nature as small scale and large scale are in comparison to each other. Do you know how a scale is represented on a map? It is represented by a line divided into few parts with numbers written over these divisions and a unit of distance like meters, kilometers, etc. Sometimes the line is thicker and is colored alternatively with black and white. Sometimes you can also see a statement written on a map like one centimeter represents five kilometers or maybe one centimeter equals five kilometer. These statements also represent the same thing as that of a scale drawn as a line. Recall the story of Sara and Suman. I told you at the beginning. Suman drew directions to reach the children's park, isn't it? So that Sara will know when to turn right, left or go straight. Another important component of a map is direction. So, how is a direction represented by in the map? Most maps contain an arrow marked with the letter N at the upper right hand corner. This arrow shows the north direction. It is called the north line. When you know the north, you can find out other directions, for example, east, west and south. There are four major directions. Can you name them? Yes, they are north, south, east and west. They are called cardinal points. What are they called? They are called cardinal points. Other four intermediate directions are northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. We can locate any place more accurately with the help of these intermediate directions. Let us try out an exercise. Draw a vertical line and then a horizontal line cutting across the vertical one. Write N at the upper end of the vertical line and S at the bottom end of the vertical line. Write E at the right end of the horizontal line and W at the left end of the horizontal line. Now draw two diagonal lines crossing the center like X alphabet. Try writing directions for the four ends. Tell me one thing. Do you know how directions are determined? Yes, the first thing that comes to our mind is the sun. 
sun rises in the east so we know that east is in this direction of the rising sun so if you are standing facing the east the opposite direction is west or at your back is west the left side will represent north and right side will be south but since we might get illusion when we can't see the rising sun so there should be some standard thing to determine direction isn't it we can find out the direction of a place with the help of a compass it is an instrument used to find out main directions it's generally circular in shape and its magnetic needle always point towards north south direction symbols are the third important component of a map it is just not possible to draw on a map the actual shape and size of different features such as buildings roads bridges trees railway lines or a well right can you draw a road of actual size on a map no isn't it so they are shown by using certain letters shades colors pictures and lines these symbols give a lot of information in a limited space with the use of these symbols maps can be drawn easily and are simple to read even if you don't know the language of an area and therefore cannot ask someone for directions you can collect information from maps with the help of these symbols maps have a universal language that can be understood by all did you know there is an international agreement regarding the use of these symbols these are called conventional symbols try finding out few conventional symbols by looking at a map i will tell you few examples a metal road is shown by two parallel lines and an unmetalled road or kachcha road is shown by two dotted lines parallel to each other observe how international state and district boundaries are represented on a map various colors are also used for the same purpose for example generally blue is used for showing water bodies brown for mountain yellow for plateau and green is used for plains find out red color represents what on a map friends there are few other terms somewhat similar to map but in reality they are different you must have heard about the term sketch what is it a sketch is a drawing mainly based on memory and spot observation and not to scale for example what suman drew for sara sometimes a rough drawing is required of an area to tell where a particular place is located with respect to 
other places. Suppose you want to go to your friend's house, but you don't know the way. Your friend may make a rough drawing to show the way to his or her house. Such a rough drawing is drawn without scale and is called a sketch map or a sketch. Another term is plan. A plan is a drawing of a small area on a large scale. A large scale map gives lots of information. But there are certain things which we may sometimes want to know. For example, the length and breadth of a room, which can't be shown in a map, right? How the things are arranged in a house, that is, where to place the furniture and where to put the TV set, etc. Try making a plan of your own house on a sheet of a paper. Try to include all the rooms, entrance, toilet, courtyard, etc. in it. At that time, we can refer drawings that are drawn to scale. Such drawing is called a plan. So, now you know that any detail sketch with details of a very small area like that of a room is called a plan. A sketch of relatively larger area but without scale etc. is known as a sketch. A sketch of even larger area with all the components of a map such as direction, scale, symbols etc. is called a map. So next time when you see a plan, a sketch or a map, you will be able to differentiate between them, isn't it? Let us now try solving few questions based on what we discussed today. Choose the correct answer from the given options. First question is, maps showing distribution of forests are called? First option is, Physical map. Second option is thematic map. Third option is political map. Choose the correct answer amongst these three options that I have given you. Now the second question is, the blue color is used for showing which feature on a map? First is water bodies. Second is mountains. Third one is planes. Can you recall? What did I tell you? Yes, it's first water bodies. Now the third question is, a compass is used for what purpose? First option is to show symbols. Second option is to find the main direction. And third option is to measure distance. Friends, try to recall, compass is an instrument, generally circular in shape or round in shape with needle. And what does this needle points out to? You will get the answer. The fourth question is, a scale is necessary for what purpose? First is, for a map, second is for a sketch or third option is for symbols. So a scale is necessary for a map or for a sketch or for symbols. Try to choose the correct answer. Friends, I hope by this session you must have understood what are maps, what is the difference between a map, a sketch, a plan. What are different types of maps and what are the major components of map? In the next session, I will come to you with some other topic. Till then, bye, take care. 
यू आर जस्ट लिस्निंग टू करिकुलम बेस्ड प्रोग्राम ध्वनि शाला प्रोडक्शन असिस्टेंस तनु गुप्ता एंड जगबंधु जाना रिकॉर्डेड बाय बटी लैंग लिंगडो एंड प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय वंदना अरिमर्दन दिस प्रोग्राम वॉज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी न्यू डेली इंडिया